board uh, and the congregation are delighted to sponsor today's event and happy to have you here with us today. Uh, the event today is loaded with uh, a lot of irony. Uh, when I contemplated inviting Craig to uh, speak here, and later he so graciously accepted that invitation, I knew that I needed to learn a few details about his career. So where do you think I searched to find those details? <laughs> That's right, on Google. Uh, the very system that Craig helped uh, to create. There I learned that Craig Silverstein uh, was the company's first recruit. He started working for Google when it was uh, just a research project at Stanford University. Craig helped design the search process and the original IT uh, components. That and more information about Craig's illustrious college and working career can be found, of course, on Google. Uh, you can also learn on Google in a single mention until today in the Gainesville Sun article about some unrelated topic that Craig is a graduate of the IB program here at Eastside High School. Um, as it turned out, coincidentally, Eastside held its 20th uh, reunion for Craig's class this weekend, which made this an ideal time for today's event. Uh, ironically, what you won't learn about Craig on Google until today is that this is not Craig's first visit uh, to this building. In fact, Craig came here many times as an adolescent uh, and was bar mitzvahed, a short, uh, in, in short of rite of passage to adulthood, uh, on this very spot in 1985. Uh, today, his speech, as with all B'nai Israel services and major events, will be heard on the World Wide Web. Uh, Craig, who helped develop Google's system of internet searching that uh, ACL Nielsen recently reported uh, has now reached over 8 billion searches in one month from the U.S. alone, and that transformed the name of the company into a verb, uh, is here today to speak about the creation of that system and his view of future internet searching. So please join me in giving a warm welcome back to Gainesville to Craig Silverstein. mumble mumble years ago. <laughs> How many of you were here then? <laughs> well, a, a good number, a good number, that's nice. Um, for those of you who weren't, you can help, you know, recreate that moment, help me, help me live my, my past a little bit. At the end of this talk, you know, feel free to break into song, <laughs> start dancing, uh, give me presents. <laughs> It'll be just like old times, it'll be great. Um, so, I thought that what I would do is have two talks in one. Um, I'll spend, you know, give some brief notes um, about search, the history of search, the, the future of search, maybe even the present of search. Um, and then um, I'll also leave a lot of time for, for questions um, with the idea that, you know, there's kind of second talk that will be directed by, by your questions and what your interests are. Um, the first talk, the, the, the remarks I'll give will be mostly about search, um, about um, using um, Google, using other search engines um, to, to try to find things, to try to find information. But of course, Google's in a lot of areas beyond what most people think of as search. And um, one of my goals for the talk today is to expand your notion of what you think of as search. But there are definitely things that Google does that I won't talk about. And those are certainly fair game for, for questions and, and for kind of the second, second part of my talk. But I'll stay a little bit focused um, um, at the beginning to talk about, talk about search. Um, Google is a search engine. Um, we did not invent this term. We certainly weren't the first search engine. Um, but the way that we think about um, our company, search isn't really the right word. The, um, the word that, that we think about is information. Um, what kind of information do you need in your life? And what um, can we do at Google to, to help you with that information, um, that information need. So you think about you know searching for, for restaurant reviews or searching for a good hotel to stay at when you're visiting you know a foreign country. But you also search for a lot of other things. You search for your car keys. You search for meaning in life. Um, these are all kinds of information needs that maybe you don't think about when you think about um, a search engine, but are certainly things that we think about. Um, 
And the history of search, the history of search engines, has been a history of kind of an ever-expanding view of what it's possible to, to search for using a computer. So um, I'll give a, a, a brief history lesson that, that, that will illustrate that point, and will we'll take us more or less to the present day. So does anyone know, this is the, the interactive part of the talk, does anyone know what the first search engine was? Yeah. Was it Mosaic? Was it Mosaic? I'm thinking even before computers. The encyclopedia. The encyclopedia is not really a search engine because to use encyclopedia, you have to already know what you want information on. The card file. The library card file. A library card file. The library card file is the second. That's a great answer. That's um the card catalog and library is really the first the first um, um search engine that most people used. But the very first search engine was a Bible concordance. So the idea is that you want to know where a particular word is used in the Bible, and you go to the Bible concordance, the search engine, you look it up, and you find out all this information about the word. Um, the very first concordances were just lists of Bible verses, but eventually there was some explanation that went along with it that talked about the uses of the various words and how they fit together, some exegesis and so forth. Um, kind of appropriate given, given this talk, talk in the synagogue, but it was religion that really prompted this first idea of being able to search for information that, that wasn't invented, being able to cross-reference things. And the very first computer search engines basically followed this model. If you think about the way that we think about Bible concordances in um, computer science land is that you're taking the Bible, which you give it a verse, and it will tell you what the words are in that verse, because you read the verse and you, you get to see all the words in it. So you go from the verse to the words in it, and then the concordance turns that around and makes it so you go from the words to the verses that they occur in. So you're taking um, the list of words and you're looking at them kind of backwards. And that's exactly what the early search engines did. You would take the lists of words. Um, the first, first search engines were library card catalogs, so the words in question would be the words in book titles. And you would turn them around, and so you could look for the word and get a list of all the book titles that had that word. They followed this model very closely. Um, the first search engines that were um, interesting for people who weren't doing library um, um, stack book lookup were, um, were made for newspapers. Um, you had very early on in the history of the AP, they had um, electronic um, records first for just the headlines and then later for the whole stories. And you could do the same kind of um, you know, magical word mumbling, jumbling on um, newspaper articles. You could easily find newspaper articles that were written about a certain topic. All this work was done in the 60s. And that takes us to um, the first search engines, which were not made in the 60s. They were made in the 90s. But they used the 60s era technology. And they just um, electronified it and electronified <coughs> it. Um, and applied it to web pages rather than newspaper articles. And so you got the first search engines with names like Lycos, Alta Vista. Who remember these things? Um, they didn't last, and the reason they didn't last, though I think Alta Vista is actually still around, um, but the reason they didn't last is because the technology that they used wasn't really the best technology for the medium. They were taking this technology that was written for card catalogs, written for newspaper articles, and they were trying to use it on the web, treating web pages as if they were newspaper articles. And nowadays, not even newspaper articles on the web look like newspaper articles. They have graphs, and they have links, and they have related stories, and they have comments. They have all sorts of things that these early search engines weren't really made to handle. They weren't, the technology wasn't taking that stuff into account. And when Google came on the scene, it was really the first, pretty much the first search engine that was really written from the ground up to be a web search engine, to think from from first principles about what is interesting about the web that you might want to search for. And this, you know, my view is a little bit biased, but I think this kind of takes um, the, the concept of the search engine into the internet age, into the, to the web age. Um, at the time it was called Search 2.0. Um, the things that Google looked at, um, people may know about page rank, this link analysis, you look at the web pages, how they point to each other, you use that to get better search results. Um, that was certainly an important factor, the, the one that we patented. But there were lots of other things that we looked at as well that search engines at the time did not. We looked at 
whether text was bold or not. Um, the AP um, you know, news buyer stuff from the 60s, they didn't have bold then, and the library card catalog certainly didn't. So their technology just kind of ignored all that stuff. We paid attention to how big the font was, whether um, it was you know, one of the header fonts that you can do in HTML or whether you know, it was just in the, in the running body of the web page. You look at all these things, you get you know, dozens of factors. There are lots of things to look at. You put them all together and you get a search engine that isn't necessarily smarter than the technology that came before, but certainly seems smarter. Um, it seems to understand the web page a lot better than, um, than what came before. And you put all this together and you get a, a search engine, um, Google, which was qualitatively um, different in terms of the results it gave than the, than the other search engines that were out there at the time, and qualitatively better. This is, this is where I come into the story. All the stuff about you know, Google being better, I didn't have anything to do with that. That was all done before I came on the scene. Um, but I thought a proof of uh, a demo that they had basically at Stanford, and it was google.stanford.edu. Um, and just a bunch of grad students working on it. And I saw it and I was immediately impressed and I was um, immediately taken by it. I had been doing my share of 60s era technology trying to make um, you know, the newspaper type searching work even better than it was before. And then I saw this whole new way of doing things that was focused on the web and it was like you know, a revelation the, the, the clouds parting. And I wanted to be a part of it. And um, I was as a grad student. I did, research projects on it, but very soon after that it became a company and I left grad school behind. Not forever, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and started Google. And um, at the time I thought that I would last a Google for four years. Um, that would have put me through 2002 and then I would have left Google. Um, it's past 2002 right now, I'm still at Google, um, and the reason is that this problem of search turned out to be a lot more interesting than I had thought, a lot more, um, I wouldn't say challenging, because you, you always knew it was going to be challenging, but there was a lot more pieces, a lot more different things that one could work on in the area of search, and you know, it just kept being interesting. I thought that after four years I would have kind of gotten bored of the subject or bored of the company or ready for something new. But search is such a wide ranging and a broad topic, that hasn't been the case. Now why is that? You know, why is it that um, you, know, you can spend 11 years working at one company and still not scratch the surface of, of, of what you can do there? Um, and the reason is that we think very broadly about what search is, as, as I kind of indicated at the, at the top of the, the talk. Um, what kinds of things can you find information about? Um, when we started, everyone assumed that the things you could find information about was web pages. What you really wanted to know is what web pages talked about the thing that you were interested in. What web pages had camera reviews for the camera you wanted to buy? You know, what web pages listed all the restaurants in Gainesville? Um, there is such a web page, by the way, um, which I, I found just when I was home um, and got to see how many of the uh, the restaurants I recognized from when I was last here 20 years ago. Uh, and it's the kind of thing that wouldn't have been possible before the advent of search engines, but it's easy to do now. But it's still part of this, what I think of as very limited view of what search engines are for, what searching is for. Um, and Google's gotten into a lot of efforts that don't fit that kind of straitjacket view of search at all. Um, to give um, one example, which is, which is very um, interesting to me, um, Google has a social networking site. Um, it's kind of like Facebook, but it's not Facebook. It's called Orkut. Um, it's not very popular in the US, but I swear if you go to Brazil, it's all the rage there. Um, <laughs> the, um, um, when we started the social networking site, um, people were like, you know, that's the last nail in the coffin for Google claiming that they're a search engine. Clearly, they're doing all sorts of random things all over the place because there's no way a social networking site is related to search. Um, fast forward 10 years or seven years, however long it's been, and now everyone's talking about what's the next generation of search, search 4.0 or 5.0, depending on who you ask. It's social search, where you ask questions that you um, want your friends to answer. You don't care about what random people have to think about, what camera to buy, you care about what friends think. And suddenly, social and search have merged, and the